Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the After Hours Podcast. This week I have the pleasure of bringing on somebody who is really a powerhouse in the real estate industry. Um, she works for Signature Premier Properties, Tammy Gatto. Thanks for coming on the Hi, podcast Dean. today. Hi Dean, you're welcome. Very excited to be here. Super excited to be here. No, it's exciting to have you on. Um, why don't you, you know, I know normally in the beginning of the podcast we always like to introduce the guests and I know you not recently got into the real you've been in the business for I'm in it six years now okay uh, I started with signature okay um what'd you do what'd you do kind of before the real estate so business? before real estate I've always been a hustler I've always held about three different jobs prior to me doing real estate um I stepped into real estate in 2017 uh, after bouncing around from office to office with uh, medical. Okay. So basically, I started medical when I was 24 years old. Um, bounced from job from position to position to position, and then afterwards fell into real estate kind of accidentally. So, long story short, there was definitely a rift within the management within the medical offices. They were never giving me what they said they were going to give me. The uh, that's how life works. A lot of times, you right, always people exactly. people tend to not always keep their word in life. Right, but. exactly. All right, so I ended up in real estate 2017. I had just left my last medical position. I started at 24 years old in medical, doing a you know, nine-to-five job, because this is what I was told I have to do, nine-to-five job. You That's what we were all better told better growing up, well. I feel like. I mean, according, by, yep, according to my family and whatnot, you were always doing a nine-to-five job. You need benefits. You need this. You need, you know, you need right. all this backing you so I ended up stepping into cosmetics towards the end I loved it I was actually working for a great cosmetic surgeon um, they offered me a cosmetic coordinating position I was ready to go we were opening up an office in the city and I bucked heads with the office manager who had stole commission from me and <laughs> ended up leaving that position so I had called a co-worker prior that was a surgical coordinator, and I said, hey, I need to pick up a few extra bucks. Is there anywhere I can go? Yeah. And she said, why don't you go over to the Signature office, Signature Premier Properties. They had just opened about maybe seven years in. Um, I said, okay, fine. I said, let me pick up some extra cash. I headed over there, uh, and it ended up being the turning point of my life pretty much after that. That's, that's amazing. And you said yeah. that was what, around 2017? 2017, I stepped in. Um, How was it going up, so I stepped into the office. I was with the, the heavy hitting office of Signature. So okay. there was a tremendous amount of clout within the office. At that point, there was only about 700 agents. It was um, only 700 agents. 700 agents. And now we're at 2,000, wow. which is like insane. That's fantastic. Um, sure. And under 20 years. I wonder and if that 2,000 after this last year or two is going to be 2,000 next year. I don't year. know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. We'll don't have know. to see. I mean, right now, I feel like. You know, they're, pl they're definitely staying steady. They definitely yeah. were able to acquire a lot of the um, top agents over No, the they company. do. They have a lot of big names over there. Yes. Definitely a signature. So. so I think that, um, so afterwards when I stepped into it, I was just working, doing the back end of the paperwork, getting ready to go back to doing the position that I was doing with medical. So you weren't in, sa not in real yeah. estate sales. You just started working in the real estate business doing other stuff. Yes, Got I was it. doing the back end of it, and I was getting ready to go back into medical. Okay. Uh, a big cosmetic surgeon was coming from um, the city, and they were going to open up a large practice on Long Island. Um, I was working with a lot of the heavy hitter agents with Signature. Yep. I ended up getting ready to go back into medical um, we were going to open up a large practice on, on Long Island. We, they were coming from the city. We were ready to go. And the doctor ended up getting into some type of uh, conflict and didn't couldn't open up the oh, office. Wow. Right. It was pretty big um, on Long Island. And I said, guess what? What am I going to do to make money? Yeah. And that was pretty much what became the question. What am I going to do to make money? Yeah. Um, coming from a sales background, I felt that Coming from a sales background, I felt that I could definitely dabble with this and see what was going on. But with the be, real estate, you're yes. Saying. But to be quite honest, I was not 100% in it to win it. I was, my heart was going back to medical and being in a, a nine to five job because this yeah. is what was programmed in my head. And I said, let me give this a shot. So I was on the phone with my friend Peter, and I remember saying to him, I am broke. What am I going to do? And I said, am I going to go into luxury car sales or am I going to do real estate? And this was pretty much what happened. And he is kind of like a 
low blow, you know, he calls it the way it is type of person. And he listened to me for a second and he said, I think you should try real estate. And yeah. I said, do you think? And he goes, yep, I think you should try real estate. I'll never forget it. I always tell him this years later now, six years later. And I said, it's a good thing that you told me that because I think that steered me in that direction. Of course. All right. I gave it a shot. Um, and I sold 35 homes my first year. That's so, amazing. Yeah. That's and that's also something that I, you know, kind of wanted to get into. Yep. You know, selling thirty-five homes your first year as first an year. agent. I mean, that's just fantastic. People are in the business fifteen, twenty years that can't sell that amount of homes. So, right. what was it like? You know, coming into a bit. Did you even really know the business? No. So I kind then? of. <laughs> was it just connections you yes. had from life? And, and uh, to that's be amazing. honest with you. People try to people strive yeah. for that after years of putting the time in, and you just I have to, to do tell that you, year I mean, one. Yes. I'm in the business six years, and I have most of my business is referral based from all different positions that I've held since 15 years old. I've yeah. worked since 15. So, this is what I always say when I think about, um, you know, other like other clientele of like people that, you know, they don't. I think that the, ba the basis is that all of your jobs, all of your past. All of your career, all of your past comes together to do real estate. That's how I feel. Because most of real estate is relationship-based. And that brings everybody together right. to, you know, to present what you have to present here. So it's all relationship-based. Um, and did you say you also won Rookie of the Year? Yes. Also? So was, it, was, it that, was it that year? 2018, I was Rookie of the Year with Signature. And I remember Pete Morris, the owner of the company, coming over to me and saying you're going to be at the top of the company. And I remember saying to Pete, I don't even want to do this. <laughs> I remember saying to Pete, I don't think this is going to go anywhere. And he goes, Tammy, you talk to me in two years, you'll be at the top of the company. That's and I never forgot that. Honestly, they're like family to me now, but I never forgot that. Um, I definitely think that it has been a wild ride when I had stepped into real estate in 2017 um, like what was your why? Why did you? Yeah. I know I know you said financial, but there's always more well, of, of a reason. Yeah. You know, so why, you know, somebody would make that career change. Right. Um, was there any other reason besides the financial aspect of you having to figure something out right now? Yes. 2018 in May, I got my license. And um, I'm sorry, 2017 in May, I got my license. And my father was having heart conditions okay. so you know basically in 2016 we had lost my aunt um you know we're a very tight-knit family yep. um super italian you know we grew up with my aunt she was yeah, yeah. like another mother and she passed 2016 suddenly um and then afterwards my father started going into heart failure in 2018 um when i had got my license 2017 I remember him, this is a civil service man who has worked 30 years in the corrections uh, with sheriff's department, you know, so he did not understand anything else but civil service. And he said to me, well, you can't do this full time. And I said, I'm going to do it full time. And he just looked at me and I said, I'm going to do it full time. And then afterwards, he went into the hospital in July 2018 and he passed November 2018. So it was a wild ride. But I, I will tell imagine. you, yeah, I will tell you this. Um, I'd got my license, um, my first closing, I'll never forget her, Suzanne Warren, old school Huntington, old school Huntington agent, really great woman. Yeah, yeah. She was with me for the walkthrough and I could not go to my first closing because dad was having a procedure where it was a life or death procedure and he did end up, um, passing after that. So I remember that I ran to the hospital, but I will tell you this. If I did not get into real estate at the point in time that I got into real estate, I could not have handled all of his finances, all of his um, properties, every nonsense that went on. As soon as he passed, nobody paid anything. I was had about a hundred bucks in my bank account. I was, you know, I said this is gonna either make or break me, and I'm either gonna make it or I'm gonna sink or swim. And I said I'm gonna swim, and that was what I did. Yeah, I mean to to have all forget all all that other pressure on you personally right. while also going into a career that, you know, we all could admit when we get into something new, we don't know anything about it. No. You know, so to get into something new, dealing with all of that, right. you know, that's just, that's, that's, it's amazing that you were able to overcome yes. all of that personal, you know, pain that you were going through at that time. Yeah. You know, and 
take control of the situation, you know, fi- financially and also deal with everything else you had going on, yep. you know, in life. I think at that point in time, I had no clue what I was doing. And I remember, um, you know, I remember him saying to me that you're up at bat. And I said, I don't know what the hell I'm doing in my head. I said, I don't know what I'm doing. And I said, we're going to we're going to give this a shot because I felt that I owed it to him and everything he put into his life and what he left to us to do the right thing here. And I said, I'm going to get this together. Um, and that was it. I said, I'm going to work and I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Um, I think a lot of that came from him, to be honest with you, because that's just who he was as a person. Um, but I, I do feel that if it hadn't been for that, that, um, drive to do this, I don't know. Cause real estate is very tough to begin with it, real estate is very tough to get into at the beginning. Of course, there's no salary. You're there's not getting no paid. no salary. Yeah. yeah, right. You're working for yourself. You're working as, um, you know, you're working you're for self yourself. Empl- you're self-employed. Right. You're self-employed. Even though you don't own the business, you're, you're a business owner. Yeah. yeah, right. You kill to eat. So basically, you're if you're not if you're not on your game, if you're not turning around and you're not, you know, going, 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 I, you know, you're not going to make it in the business. I feel like you're either going to do this and you're going to go and you're going to kill to eat and you're going to stick in there and you're going to friggin' hold it down or you're going to sink. Yeah. Really, that's it. No one's feeding you. I don't know. I hear a lot of the new agents coming up and they're like, oh, you know, they're on the teams and the teams are feeding them and this and that. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I always find that the people that say they're being fed, they're being fed. Yeah, they carry crap out after a while. I feel like you have to be in it. You have to feel the industry. You have to know the industry. You have to know that this is what you know, you're going to do to get, you know, get where you have to go. Yeah. So I think that, you know, my main thing was, you know, I want, I said to myself, because I, oh, I also came from, you know, between medical, besides working medical prior to real estate, I was also in the nightclub industry. I was in bridal industry. Those are I, good connections in those industries, yes, though. It's, that, so, it's yeah. so crazy because I sold most of them houses afterwards. Of so course. they're Yeah, they're doing yeah. really great. You know, it's wonderful to see them doing so good. But I think that, you know, knowing that all of that came from all of these past experiences for me um, was such a big deal. So I think that it all paid off afterwards. But I was going to ask you how you, because you said you do a lot of networking still, right? So I do. So how do you manage, because I know in our business, it's, like you said, you have to kill to eat. You yes. know, if you don't put the time in yes. and if you don't do the, the old school things right. that you need to do in our business, like pound the pavement, you know, a, a lot of people nowadays are just trying to do only networking, I feel like. But yes. you also have to spend some time in the office, make oh, some phone yeah. calls and reach out to your network sure. that you, yeah, your sphere of, you know, right. people that you have around you. You know, how do you how do you manage all, all of your time with, you know, getting out there as much yeah. as you need to? And, you know, what, what do you really do to, to make sure you're getting business? Because you said you're you're busy right now during, yes. during a time where... 90% of 95% of people aren't busy. Yeah, so I, I think the main thing is, and I've always said this to everybody, is turning that off. Hearing everybody say, I'm not busy, I'm not busy, what's going right. on? I don't know. I, turn it off. That's everybody's mentality turn right now. It Rates are high, off. this is bad. Turn it off. Like you do the news, turn it off. Because if you keep listening to this, this is going to affect this. So turn it off. Uh, I think the main thing is, what can you do to better your business? And then start looking at your business. Hey, can I, can I go on hard on social media? Can I send a mailer out? Can I, bring, can I hit up my phone with all my contacts and try to bring people in that way? Can I revisit past clients? Yeah. Uh, what can you do to bring this back to you? Of course. And do not listen to this because this yeah. to me is static and I feel like a lot of the, you know I love the networking events love them I think it's very important I yeah. think you had a beautiful one last night yeah, yeah. It was a great time no, with it's, good. It's, scene. it's good it's good to bring awesome people to together bring people together right. but I think at the beginning of my real estate career I feel like I was out every freaking networking event so I remember every every networking event I was out I was out I was here I was there I was here I was there yeah. and then I wanted to be co- to be known as and I'm sure there were so many people laughing at this at the beginning because there's so many prior positions I held but I wanted to be known as Tammy Real Estate. And now when I walk into a friggin' bar, when I work into a restaurant, when I walk into 7-Eleven, Tammy, she does real estate. Tammy, she does real estate. And that's what you need. You need people to recognize you're doing real estate. It's building um, a brand. Right, because that's what's going to build you. Yep. Um, and then my reputation with my clients. I feel like my clients, my, my relationships with my friends and past people, I really think, you know, has held me this far, you know, yeah. thus far. So... 
Um, I think that's a big to do. So afterwards, how to balance it, you're saying how to balance networking and whatnot. So, you know, coming from, um, coming from a divorced family, which is, uh, was very, very, a crazy divorce, you know, and I always stress to a lot of my friends and whatnot that are going through this now, um, to really watch your children because you don't realize how much exactly the children are really, you know, how much stress is pressed on the kids. So as a child growing up, I had a very difficult issue with boundaries because I was always that child that was, are you okay? Are you okay? Is this one all right? Is dad okay? Is mom okay? Is sister okay? Is brother okay? And it was never, am I okay? Are you okay? Did I, you know, so I never started asking myself really, am I okay? Because I was constantly projecting myself to see, are they okay? Because then I'm okay. Right. Are this all right? Is, and in re personal relationships, deadly. Uh, people pleasing, deadly. So when I reached a certain plateau in my business and I was so busy and I was so going, 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 I said to myself, well, how am I going to, um, how am I going to bring this back to me? How am I going to make this work for me? Because at this point I'm burning myself out. Um, you know, constantly, yes. Oh, can you do this, Tammy? Yes, I can. Can you be there? Yes, I can. Can you be here? Yes, I can. You, it was, in, it was nuts. So I said to myself, where is this coming from? Where, where can we, where can we visit this? Where can we bring this back to me? Um, and I started to learn the value of the word no. Okay. Yeah. No, you That's can't important. do it. Yeah. That's an important word. It's the biggest. Imp yeah. Because I'm that way too. You always want to yes people. Yes, because, yes, I can. Yeah, you can do exactly. that right. Sure. Because you're not going to cut yourself. Yes, I can. I can get there. Yeah, you're all right. I can get to that place. Yeah, you can do this. And I normally make it happen, but yes, you got to learn to say. You got to. You got to learn to say no. <laughs> as you like, while. all right. As you you're going to. crazy. Right. right. So you have to learn the value of saying no. So I think at that point, um, when real estate started getting really heavy. I started saying to myself, oh, my God, I'm going to die. I said, I have nobody doing what I'm doing. I have nobody to call. I have nobody to, to duplicate what I'm doing. I have paperwork sitting on my friggin' desk. Yep. What am I going to do? So I started to prioritize what was going on. And I think a lot of that come from childhood. You know, you have to revisit the childhood wound and fix this whole thing before you keep, pre you know, presenting this because what was going on was it was presenting in my personal relationships with my friends and relationships as well, yep. you know, and it was not doing them any good. If I'm not being honest with them, I'm not being honest with myself. So I felt that was a, was a main thing. Um, to dial back and just knowing boundaries, boundaries. Hey, you know, I have the gym in the morning, so I'm going to do the gym in the morning because that's right. what makes me feel good. I'm going to do the gym in the morning and hey, I'm going to do Reiki tomorrow and I'm going to do yoga the next day and I'm going to concentrate on myself and I'm going to take an hour to sit with the freaking bold eagles in Centipore because those are my thing. <laughs> that was a big thing for me. So I go, oh, I'm going to sit in nature and I'm going to sit there and I have to say, hey, I'm allotting myself an hour and guess what? This phone is being turned off because I do not want to hear this constantly in my head. I need to ground myself because if you don't ground yourself, you can't help anybody else do anything. If you are not grounded yourself, you right. cannot help anybody do anything. And that's a big point. No, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because I wanted to, you know, you've seen so much success in this business, but I feel like success starts with personal success yes. and personal development. Yes. And that's something I've focused on recently is, you know, we all get so busy in our business and we seem to forget sometimes, you know, being healthy you yes. know, f f physically, yes. you know, eating right, going to the gym, doing yes. this stuff that if you don't do that, eventually n nothing else really matters. Yes. Um, so I know you're you're big into that journey of, yes, of fitness and stuff. Yes, I'm definitely into fitness journey. I know it's changed my life recently it and you feel changed. so much better as yes, a person. I, you know, I definitely think that, you know, the body is the temple and I feel like what you feed your body is what is going to come out. So, I mean... If you're, like I said, you know, you get to a certain point and you realize, you know, you have to help yourself. If right. this is not working for you and you want to eat better and you want to go to the gym and you want to get a trainer and you want to do something, do it because nobody's going to help you. Nobody's bailing you out. Right. You're doing it yourself. And this is, and guess what? If you don't do it for yourself, you can't bring it and help anybody else. And I think that was like a main thing for me, like just doing for yourself. If you're going to eat right, listen. You 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 have one life. If you're gonna not treat your body the right way, this is gonna show up down the line. At some point. So, yeah, yeah, hell definitely. yeah. Past forty, it, it's gonna show up. So that's a big to do. Definitely. You know, something getting getting back to some not really business stuff, but I know you've also said that you're 
a big Tony Robbins fan. Mm. So what's what's how did you when did you first when Robbins we when were you first life. introduced to Tony Robbins and Tony Robbins ten years old. Now that I'm doing this personal yeah. podcast, I love relating to people like that, uh, and yeah. I look up to people like that. So me too. That's, that's, that's amazing. Tony Robbins changed my life. I think I've been watching Tony Robbins since he's been on Oprah since I'm ten years old. Wow. Tony Robbins. I have not walked on the fire yet, but I will. And he is uh, changed my life. I think that man. Even his story and knowing where he came from and shaking it off and just the visionary. Yeah, I'm all about learning and bettering yourself. And if, if uh, finding a mentor that works for you. Um, recently, you know, Pete Morris had us at the Paramount and had Tom Ferry, one of Tom the Ferry's real estate. Fa- oh, Tom Ferry's awesome? fantastic. Yeah, isn't he awesome? He's, I feel like he's, he's amazing. Really awesome. Yep. So that was my first experience with him speaking live. I'm very fortunate. Oh, I was able a bug. to be there. Oh, <laughs> I saw that. Oh, what? Oh shit! You know Tom. Tom Ferry's fantastic. I live. I live right there. So I was, I was like, wait a second. Why is there so many realtors in the village? And then right. I realized. Right. That I know. Meanwhile, I was rushing over there like a maniac with the parking in the village. Yeah. So yeah, he was friggin' awesome, and I definitely think you know his way of thinking about the planning and. You know, I like the artificial intelligence he was going over too. That was pretty awesome. I didn't even think of that. World now. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So become become very very important nowadays. You know all that stuff, and it helps our business. So I think so too. If you look at it, so I'm not a super techie person, but if you look at it, where, um, listen, this can better me. I'm always that person who asks when you get into that. I don't know if it could better you because maybe you're not writing that paragraph that you should have took the time to do yourself, and now a robot's doing it for you. So. Are you bettering yourself or maybe you're making more money because now you're more efficient. Right, so you're, you're bettering, efficient, you're bettering right, yourself right. in different ways. But I don't sure. know if you're not educating yourself with. I don't know about that. Or maybe you are. Yeah, maybe I you feel are. like certain ways that they, well, when you write the description for the listings and stuff, I yeah. have my girlfriend Lisa doing that for me. And I Like said, sometimes if I want to write something, it just blurts out the whole paragraph. Right. So that's awesome. But. Right. I think it's awesome too. Yeah. So I do, I think chat, uh, what the hell chat is it? Chat GBT. Yeah, I chat think. GBT. Yeah, yeah. Right. So... Yeah, I do think that the Tom Ferry thing, what was I going to say about Tom Ferry? Love him. And Tony Robbins. So oh, Tony Robbins. You changed so your life, huh? That's, that's amazing. Tony Robbins, I if think. If you're listening, is, Tony. Yeah, Tom, oh my God. You're Tony, a life please, changer. I think I would, he knows that, right? So Tony Robbins, and, you know, I also am a very big, um, I was always a very big spiritual person. So I was raised Catholic. Um, I choose to have that relationship you know, and I always tell everyone this because especially what's going on in the world right now, I feel that um, you have to choose. I never felt like, listen, the Catholic, I know everyone hears I'm Catholic and they go, oh, they're judgmental, Tammy, they're judging everybody and that's it. I never felt that way about it. I felt I had a personal relationship with that, with God, with the universe, you know, and that worked for me. I never sit there and try to spoon feed anybody into my, what I believe. I think everybody can have what they believe. I actually think if you believe in something, that's amazing because that'll, that'll bring you through life. If you believe whatever, if you want to believe, if you're, I have Jewish friends, I have so many different friends from so many different cultures and so many different religions. Um, You know, if this is what you choose to believe, stand for something because if you stand for nothing, Stand for something. Raise your kids to believe in something because that's what's going to get them through life. If you don't believe in something, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're really in trouble. No, that's I an mean, amazing that's way to look at life. Thing. Right. Yeah, that's definitely. the whole thing. I was fortunate enough. I was raised Catholic. I went to Catholic school. You know, I would say you know, this was what carried me through the hardest points of my life. Definitely carried me through my dad's death. Definitely carried me through many things. But, um, you know, that's the relationship I choose to bring into my life. This worked for me. Um, that's all that matters. Right. And, you know, and I, I don't know if everybody understands that, uh, but you know, that's I have all to that say matters. Something. I'm going to say this because this I was going to bring this up later on and I, I feel it's a good thing to bring up, um, you know, with all of this going on right now throughout the world. I will say this. I see a lot of ignorance. I see a lot of ignorance. I see a lot of hate. It's very disturbing to me. Yeah, it's sad. It's from, from sad. Any, from, any, from anybody. Isn't it, you know? though? Yeah, yeah it's, sad. it's sad, and it's so disturbing. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to tell you a story. I was um, at my best friend's house, who is a second family to me, and I was at the dinner table, and she was telling me her nephew had been expelled from high school. So here we go. So I said, oh, Jesus, now what the hell happened? You know. <laughs> We all had a good time in high school, so I'm like, all right, what the hell happened? So she tells me 
Tat, he wrote, uh, he drew a swastika. And I said, no, he didn't. And she goes, yeah. I said, okay. Um, and he come in and he was embarrassed. I could tell that I was sitting there. He didn't want to tell me why he was in trouble. So I took a deep breath and I waited uh, for him to finish dinner. And then I went out to my car. He was outside and I followed him outside. I said, come here for a second. I said, um, you know, I heard... I heard what happened. And he says, I know, Aunt Tammy. I said, listen, I go, do you understand what that is? And he said to me, yes. He goes, I was being stupid. I said, no, no. I said, do you understand what that means? And I went over with him what happened during the Holocaust, what happened during World War II. And I truly believe, and this is why I wanted to say this, I truly believe that parents need to have this open conversation with their children yeah. because if you're not telling the children what happened here, okay, and what happened in the world, it'll repeat. And you need to explain to them, this is why you got expelled. Six million people were, were murdered. You know, this yeah. is why you got expelled. So it's understand, I know you were being dumb. I said, but it's not being dumb. You need to educate the children so that they know this is what's going on this is what needs to be done, you know, and so they understand because a lot of it is just not is the ignorance and the the ignorance and the hate is coming from people not communicating what's going on. Because if we're talking, it's very, like me and you could have a different kind of opinion. Hey, Tammy, I don't like this. OK. All right. I don't like this. We're fine. Right. Yeah, yeah. If, if you don't have to think that one one whole religion is going to wipe the other one out and this and that. This is about hate. This is about ignorance. This is about informing people, communicating. I think a main thing of, of you know, and I, I don't have children. I give parents a hell of a lot of credit for raising the kids today. I do not know what I would do. Hearing half of this, and I said, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I was like, I hear this. But I don't know what they're educating these kids are on, are on in school. But I will tell you this. Open the communication with the kids. The suicide rate is the highest on Long Island it's ever been. Open yeah. your communication with your Same. children. Open the communication. Because a lot of the times, if just that one conversation you could have had, it makes a difference in the kid's life. Yeah, no, So that's I think that's important, um, to, for without a doubt. I agree with you. No, it's definitely educating any anybody, I yes. feel like, instead of just having opinions on things is, yep. is, is good. You definitely want to know why you feel that way or not feel that way. Yeah. You know, so... You know, talking about the, you know, I don't even like talking about the world. I feel like news, there's always bad news. I know. You know? So it'd, be I, ni it'd be nice for good news. Right, you know, I know. While. Wouldn't you like to turn it on and see something good, right? Yeah. That's why I say turn the fuck, turn the news off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Turn the news off because I feel like a lot of the times that'll taint your brain, but you want to know what the hell is going on. But I think, you know, the most important thing really is that your kids are going to come home to you. Your friends are going to come home to you, and it starts with you. It starts with you. The ignorance and the hate. This starts, when it comes to you, it's also shot down by you. This, that don't make sense to me. They're coming to you and the kids are asking you a question. Answer the freaking question. Tell them this is not the way this goes on. These people feel this way. I mean, we don't have three hours for me to explain what I think goes on in the Middle East. You know, I'm not even going to go there with this. But I feel like I, I think you need to sit down and you need to explain to the children, explain to your friends, you know, this is where you stand and you're an open person and you're willing to hear A and B's opinion because we're people and people are allowed to have a different freaking opinion. You know, if somebody feels this way about something, great, that makes them who they are. Stand for something. I say you stand for something. It makes all the difference, you know, and be yeah. willing to hear another person's opinion. I don't like people that are completely shut off, you know, I think in general. No, of course, definitely. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, Going into something a little bit different, Yay. I just <laughs> <laughs> what are uh, what are the two mm. most frequently asked questions that you that you get from people? Yes, the two most frequently asked questions that I get from people. I like to ask people that. Sometimes. Oh, is it? It's a good yeah, question. It's a great question. Two. Let me think. Two most frequently is how is the market, and Tammy, why are you single? <laughs> That's always the two top questions. Tammy, how is the market? And then a weird face, why are you single? This is constant. I think this is constant for the past, like, probably maybe 
two years, I feel like I'm getting that same thing. Um, so how is the market? So how is the market? We have the market is interest rates are sky high right now. Um, you know, we're going to see what happens. It's an election year. It's we're sky high compared to 2 right. 3% COVID sure. rates. Sure, and we'll never realize. see the 3% that I refied my own home for. I know, Thank crazy. You. Amen. But I mean, like I said, I know. Thank you. But I will never see that um, that 3% that we refied for ever. I hope we do. Yeah, I would see though. five. I don't think we're going to see three, but who knows? Maybe, maybe. So I think, you know, when I had taken on my, my father's home and I had bought the siblings out of the home and redid it, um, I remember saying, oh, okay, he's at 5%. So we're going to refi this and get a crazy rate. And I said, okay, awesome. So I think now what I tell my buyers, what I tell people that are interested, you know, in purchasing now is, how's it look? <laughs> Good. Yeah, what I, tell, um, what I tell them is, listen, we're going to purchase now and we're going to refi down the line. The famous line, is it a marry line? the home and date the rate. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's the famous line that people that line. use. Okay. Date the rate. You fall in love with the home. Yeah. Like, now, as You're opposed to. Fall in love with these homes are not coming down listen, anymore. Year, on Long Island. A year, <laughs> a year ago, you were paying fifty, a hundred thousand over ask. Right. So now, if you could pay the asking price or below, right, and refinance the rate down the road, you know that's that's the right way to do things, in my opinion. Yeah. I tell everybody look at affordability. You know, right. don't look at the the interest rate. No. You know, the payment I makes sense. It's always a great time to buy real estate. Right. That's, that's my opinion. Well, there's always going to be people buying and there's always going to be people selling, and that's never going to change on right. Long Island. That's just the way it is. There's going to be people buying, there's going to be people selling, and then you worry about it down the line. I don't, I don't foresee, really, not to make the prediction of the, you know, the market, but I don't foresee the Long Island home sale going down. I don't feel the price. There's no inventory, down. so how could they go down? There's no inventory. You know, I just don't foresee it. And plus, when the interest rates do drop a Values little bit, you're going to see, right. Values right. Aren't gonna you're come gonna down. see a shitload of people jump in this. So I think buy while you can. If you see something you like, buy it. Like I say, with a pair of jeans, even though it's a lot more, you know, it's an investment. But I always say, listen, you'll remember that freaking pair of jeans you didn't buy, right? So buy it. And then you worry about this down the line. If it makes sense for you and if it works for you. I never push any of my clients. If this works, I educate them. I feel the biggest thing with my clients and with business is educating them. I'm a big educator with this. You have educate, to educate the consumers. Communicate always. and education. This is you need to communicate. Hey, this is what makes sense here. So if we do this and you bring the, the rate comes down afterwards, this makes sense here. Right. So do it, you know. Um, and that's how I feel with that. With that. Like you can always um, navigate around it. Of so course. we shall see how the market is still going. Uh, you know, my personal life, you know, I always get asked that question, why are you single, right? So, I, uh, you know, I took a time, my dad passed 2018. So, after that point of time, I think I was a little loopy, obviously, for obvious reasons, right? So, we want to, I wanted to get in touch with who I was as a person. So, a lot of the times when people come to me, a lot of my friends are going through divorces now, and they ask me, well, oh, Tammy, you didn't get married, you didn't do, I said, yeah, because Tammy is working on Tammy now. So this way, when you do meet the person you're with, this is a, you're, you're a whole person. And guess what? They're a whole person. And this is going to work because you are together as two whole people. Nobody's carrying each other. Nobody is, you know, not uh, leeching off people. Like, you need a, you need a team. I want a partner. I, I don't need, anybody can have a boyfriend. Anybody can have anybody you want. But it, you want a partner, yeah. and you're going to draw that into you because you're going to be a whole person. And guess what? Like Deepak Chopra said, I'll never forget reading that paragraph in his book. He walked into a, a, one of the meat shops, and the wife, he knew. You just know. And I will never forget the conversation I had with Aesop, actually. Um, I was really bummed out. I dated a guy that didn't work out, and I was on the phone with him, and I said, you know, I'm tired. I said, I'm so tired of this. I'm so tired. And he goes, Tammy, he says, like with everything else, when you meet the person, you'll know. And until that point, you're going to work on you. I'll never forget that. He's a personal friend of mine since I'm 17 yeah. years old. But I, I will never forget him saying that to me. So I feel that way, and I do feel that you draw in your people to you. So if you want to create who you want to be, then you'll draw the correct person in. Because I feel that prior to that, I think a lot of mine was making, trying to make people be who they were not. You know, if this is who they're showing you, 
the potential of what you think people are going to be. And I tell a lot of the girls when I'm out, you know, and I run into a lot of the young girls yeah. dating, they're wild, they're hysterical. I mean, I, I had a good time in my 20s too, you know. So they, they'll all come to me and they'll ask me these questions and I tell them, please, whatever you do, don't date the potential of the person. Date who they are today. Because if you date the potential of who they are, they may never reach that potential. And you're wasting so much time sitting there hoping they're going to be something. Date the person who's in front of you, who's showing you who they are. Don't date who you think they're going to be 10 years down the line. Date who they are today. That's a great point. Yeah, because you'll save yourself a lot of time. Believe me, I wish I did it. I wish I did this 10 years ago because I feel that I see it now. And I think a lot of the times back, you don't see it because you're, you don't, it's not in your face. So if I could help somebody not make the mistakes I made 10 years ago, this would be awesome. You yeah, know? of course. That's and why that's we do this. that's how I feel. Right? No, and that's, that's why that's we do why this. We do that's this. why we're here. Of course. Right. And you brought up a good point because before what we were talking about, I feel like a lot of people always focus on trying to fix maybe oh my someone else. Not even in just a relation, even yes. in business. Everything. You know, and before you fix other people, right, it starts with personal development. You have to be comfortable in, you know, within with who you are, you know, right. as a person. You know, so. Right. And because I think a lot of times people sometimes if you are concentrating on fixing somebody else, you're not fixing yourself, right? Yeah. So that's the main thing. You don't want to turn that mirror on yourself to say, geez, I did that, okay. So if you can turn that mirror and just say, okay, all right, this is what I'm owning this, uh, and guess what? Nobody's perfect, and Jesus wasn't perfect, and I'm not perfect either. I'm sitting here, you know. So I'm sitting here, and I'm going, hey, I can turn around and, and uh, uh, acknowledge what the hell's going on here and then better the situation. You look at the situation and see where you can weigh it. You know, that type of thing. No, I, I agree with you. Yeah. And something I always like to go into before we end the episodes is right. I feel like something so important, and it seems like you have a great support system, is having people yeah. in your corner. You know, oh, what, yeah. Why do you think it's, you know, I know it's so important, but what's, you know, what, what are some reasons why you think and, oh, yeah. this you know, is a big one for having me. people in your corner, why it's so important? I have to tell you, when I hit, and you know. you've gone through so much. Yes. You know. When you go through, um, you know, first of all, what, you know, you see when you lose a parent or you go through a loss like that, I think I called them the soldiers. The soldiers stood up. So, you know, you knew who your soldiers were at that point. People that I hadn't talked to in about five years showed up for me. So, you know, you know who rises to the occasion when you go through something like that. But I think that it's so important to have a support uh, team around you um, because a lot of the times, you know, you get – you. There's a lot of static, and you have to keep yourself grounded. I don't necessarily think surrounding yourself by a bunch of realtors is the way to go. If you're a realtor, if you're a lender, I don't know if you feel that. You feel that, right? Well, I feel like a lot of them do. Yes. You know, I don't know if that's. I don't know if that pushes you to get to where you want to be. Yes, like I. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know. Okay. Yes, I hear what you're saying. Like, I feel like if you're feeding off each other and it's That's great. great. Right, and you can grow. That's awesome. You always want to be around like-minded mm -hmm. people. Yes, or above, right? I like to make my circle larger than me. Of course. So I like to make my circle like, okay, I did X. These people are doing this. I, I want to be there. So right. I'm going to start being there, and right. I'm going to start working with them there. And I think that's my, my main thing is we're going to try to – we're going to try to go here. Where can I be that I can grow? Where do I want to be here? And I'm going to get there. Um, that's me. I feel like that's always been me. But I think the the root of me is the people that support me. I, you know, I have four fortunate to have very close friends around me. I'm very fortunate to have people that have been in my corner since, I don't know, 14 years old at this point. Michelle, you know who you are. Um, but, like, I feel like... I feel like you have to, have to, have to have this because you get a lot of this static. And if yeah. you keep listening to that static, that'll bring you right down with the static. You yeah. know, there was, um, there was a quote. I thought it was really awesome. So I'm a very big birder. I'm a very big nature person. So everyone always kind of laughs at me because I can tell you, like, what, what hawk is making what sound, what cardinals are there. But, you know, I'm like a bird person. I'm an yeah. animal person across the board, but this was always the big thing for me. So there was a post that somebody posted about the bald eagles, and I've always been a freaking big bald eagle person. So it said if the, you know, when the eagle is attacked, when it's going through a storm, um, you know, the, the storm is coming, right? And all the other birds will go and hide. You know what this bird does? 
rises above and it flies above the storm and through the storm. And that's what I think I base my life on. I feel like if you can go through the storm and you rise above the BS that's clicking in your ear and you have that support system and you are grounded within yourself, because I really think you have to be grounded to get past that. You have to be here to get past what you're going through. Um, You know, you can get through anything, really. You know, that's the main thing. Like if you're grounded here, um, you can go through the storm. So I always like that comparison to rising above it. Because if you really, sometimes, you know, it's hard. You were human, right? So we hear this. We're all human. Oh my God, right. We're going, oh my God. They say, oh my God. So I feel like it's a lot of this. But I feel like when you, when you realize, hey, that really isn't who you are, you can go past this. That's the main, that's a main thing. No, of course. Well, that's, that's amazing. And that basically kind of sums up our, our episode. I know okay. we, we talked about some, some great stuff and yeah. what we just talked about, you've, sh- you've shown that, you know, in life and in business, you, too. you know, that's, that's <laughs> fantastic. So to have you on here today was an honor. Hopefully, oh. uh, in the future we could do it again. And Absolutely. I appreciate you sharing, you know, some of those experiences with the audience and yeah. hope everybody can subscribe to the after hours podcast, um, and click the link and, uh, Again, thanks for coming on, Tammy. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.